everyone, today I am going to be colouring a picture from Matchstick Mouse, the autumn colouring book. I know it's not autumn, but uh, it's a really cute picture. It's actually a buddy colour with June colours. Now she has coloured this already actually and sent me her version which is beautiful. And the idea is that we both have a go on video and then link to each other's and you can go and have a little look at hers and compare it to mine. She colours in a very different way to me and hers is just adorable. I haven't really thought about how I'm going to colour it but I need to try and not think about how she did it. But as you can see Matchstick Mouse isn't actually in this picture. We've got a gorgeous sleepy owl, little spider, very cute. So uh, we're going to have a go. Now I've got my Castle Arts Gold out today. Um, there's quite a few darker colours and browns and things which I thought would be good and I'm going to actually start with the tree trunks um, I'm going to do them fairly dark, but of course we've got this black sky, so we don't want to go too dark, or else uh, we'll um, we'll end up not necessarily being able to see the tree trunks at all. So my darkest um, brown is the Mars black. Um, I know it's called black, but it's a very browny black. Um, I think I'm going to leave that for now. Do my other browns, and then if I need some dark, I'll use that one to sort of shade at the end. So my next choice is my Burnt Umber and I'm going to use that for the tree trunks and what I think I might do is just go all over them with it and then we can add in some light and shade. I know it sounds odd adding in some light after but we can lighten and warm up the colour with a lighter shade of brown if we think that's necessary. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I hope everyone's well and uh, doing okay. Um, it's, uh, I didn't record yesterday actually, I was feeling quite tired and, I don't know, a little bit, bleh. but I think, um, I know why, it was nothing um, serious, I wasn't unwell, I was just tired, and, uh, but uh, I'm okay today, which is good, so I thought I would do a bit of recording, although I got distracted this morning shopping for, I just knocked you, I'm just checking your straight-ish, straight-ish, I can't straighten things, I'm no good at that. Um, I was not shopping, window shopping, or choosing, perhaps is a better word, um, some um, kitchen table, chairs, bar stools for the breakfast bar, that sort of thing. So uh, we found out the height of the breakfast bar isn't quite going to be as high as we had originally thought. But actually, um, what's that? What's that bit? I'm going to do it as a as trunk. Um, but that's okay. Um, it doesn't need to be hugely tall. And what it means is that if we're entertaining and some people are at the breakfast bar and some people are at the table, although those at the breakfast bar will have their back to those at the table while they're actually eating, they can sort of spin round and they'll be about the same height. Um, only a little bit, about 20 centimetres taller. So uh, it, I think it'll work out okay. It's not going to... It's. I'm going to have to try and can't really visualise things or picture things but it'd be slightly different to how I sort of imagined but I think that's fine it's not good or bad it's just different so that's okay but uh, everything's just sort of getting signed off and finalised which is good I've got someone coming around tomorrow to measure for flooring and they also do blinds I notice so I'm going to ask them about a blind while they're in the house so I think that's all the brown for the trunks. I'm going to use some for the um, um, bird boxes as well but I'm not going to do that yet. So I'm going to use my Mars Black now at this point to mark out all those darker areas. So probably on the edges a little bit and then around where there's something overlapping so it looks like shadow. I hope you can just sort of see that. Um, it, I'm just sort of going around the edge of everything. Oops, I moved my book again. Sorry. So I don't know how many people have got these um, Matchstick Mouse books, but they are pretty adorable. And um, the author, I follow the author on Instagram, and he's um, just been showing a few blurred small images of a new copy of Matchstick Mouse that he's going to be doing. Now, he's got so far, we're going along the bottom here and just 
making it slightly darker where it will be in shadow but I don't want to make it too dark so you can still see it um, even with the black he, um, he's got the Christmas, the autumn, the summer and Halloween at the minute is there a winter? I don't think there's a winter there's a Christmas and um, this one had flowers and things so I'm thinking is it spring I think that's that line there I think is holding up this pine cone this looks like a cuckoo clock doesn't it with these things hanging down like they're a pendulum but I think my imagination's just running away with me it's just it's got a window and a door it's a birdhouse isn't it but anyway um so yes that's quite exciting if he's got a spring one coming out soon um, I know a lot of people buy a lot of his books because he also does, he's got a uh, a sort of Yoda type book, I can't remember what it's called, and um, there's a villagey one, but I don't know, but uh, anyway, I haven't got those, it's the mouse that really attracts me and actually be honest I haven't bought these um, I was gifted them which is really really lovely and uh, they're really nice books and I feel really lucky that I've got them people are so generous and sending me things so uh, yeah this is a gift from one of my um, subscribers so thank you and uh, if you're watching I'm sure you might be and uh, it's gorgeous I love autumn it's probably my favorite season or fall, as uh, the Americans would say, which I think is a fab name. Um, uh, I there's a good re few reasons why I like autumn. I uh, I like the colours. I think most people do. The leaves. Okay, we're going to use the darker brown now. Just having a think whether I want to go slightly reddish or not with this, or maybe I could choose the reddish colours for the bird houses. What have we got? We've got a slate grey, which is a brownish colour. Oops, that's probably too dark. And we've got a permanent brown, which is still quite dark. I think, yeah, I'm going to pick this one. This is called yellow ochre, but it's actually quite brown. I don't know how well you can see. Maybe it's better if I put it against the white for you. And I'm going to just have a play around with this and see how it looks. Oh, it's going to warm it. Look at that. Get a nice warm colour. Like that. I'm not so keen on reddish browns. Uh, I like more yellowy browns and dark browns. But we will do some reddish browns for the bird houses, bird boxes, just so they look different. And this will be quite a dark brown. We'll probably use a bit more of our Mars black on that one. But this one, we'll probably put a bit more shading, a bit more shadow in this in a minute. But just warm it up with this one. Now this is a UK version of the book. The American versions, because they're Amazon printed, I think um, it says, yeah, the paper, the Amazon paper is different in America than it is in the UK. I think it's noticeably different. I think the American paper is much more toothy, which means it's got more texture, and that means you need more layers of pencil to uh, get an, a depth of colour, or a, you know, a, a sort of solid colour. It's fine for pens. I haven't used it for pens. I have used pens in other American um, you Amazon printed paper and they're very, very good for pens, really good. But for pencil, you, as I say, you have to layer it up. Now, if you like layering up pencil a lot or you press really hard, then it's going to suit you. If you are delicate and gentle with your pencil, then you might get a little bit frustrated that you have to layer it up quite a bit. But I find it fine, you know. I'm gosh, that's a funny bird. There's definitely a nest just opposite my window here. I've got the window open today, it's quite muggy. In the house, weirdly, but not outside. So we're trying to cool it off a bit. It's not sunny, it's cloudy. But um there's a it must be a nest opposite my window because the other morning I um noticed outside, I don't know if it's still there, I didn't look this morning, there was an egg on the ground just below opposite this part of the tree okay we're going to use our permanent brown now 
and finish off all our sort of shading areas. So I'm just going to bring in those darker areas a little bit further. So I'm just going all, oops, all around those edges. I didn't mean to do that. Onto the, uh, onto the, the, whatever that is. Whatever it is. I don't know, it's brown now. Whatever it is, it's brown. <laughs> I might erase that and do something different. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. But yeah, there's an egg on the ground. So obviously, um, I think it's pigeons. And uh, I suspect they get a bit big and a bit... Oh, it's a train. And um, probably, I think, I wonder if survival of the fittest means they throw the eggs out. They knock them out on purpose. I don't know. So they can be the only one that's fed. I've got no idea. Don't know much about them, but uh, they could be a bit naughty, can't they, little birds? But usually in that tree we have a nest every year, and we usually get two pigeon babies, and they come down into the garden sometimes. I'm not a big fan of pigeons, but when you see the babies, it's nice. Okay, I think I'm going to leave that there for my tree. And I'm thinking about leaves. Now this is an autumn book, so I'm wondering whether we should add some autumn colour to our leaves, but it, obviously it isn't autumn. I'm just grabbing my eraser to clean up that a little bit. It isn't actually autumn, so I'm not sure. What I'm going to do is, while I'm thinking, I'm going to colour in these pine cones. I'm going to use my Mars Black and just go over them really lightly. And that one. Are there any more? No. Um, the roof of that though. Anyway, we'll just do this first, or else if we get. And I'm going to sharpen it now. Where's my sharpener? There we go. Just give this sharpen. And then get in with some details. So I think it's going to be darker here. I know you would naturally be a bit lighter on the top, but I want to fade it towards the end of these bits so that we can emphasize the dark in there so it looks more like shadow which it, there would be shadow and it helps it to look a little bit more three-dimensional then we leave a bit of lighter area on the tips and we don't really need to use lots of different browns I don't think we can just get some dimension some definition with just the one color there we go. This one needs a little bit on the edges, it's a bit white in places. I'll just cover it over a little bit. Um, yeah, these trees. I don't know if they've got snow on. Just glancing down. Now again, I'm going to do the same here. So just a light layer of the Mars black. It's a bit harder to do a light a uh, light layer when you've got a sharp pencil, which is why I put it on its side. And then we take the colour to the end of each little roof tile. There we go. Feeling really chilled today, which is nice. I don't know why I was feeling a little bit stressed the other day. But uh, there's all sorts of things going on that sometimes stress us out, aren't they? I'm going to do this roof the same. But uh, I woke up this morning and I I wasn't tired. I'd gone to sleep early because I was tired. So I woke up feeling refreshed and I did a little bit of um, relaxation exercises. What I do is I sort of feel all the muscles in my body. I try and relax them all. Sometimes some of them don't want to relax very easily and so if they don't I just tense them a little bit and then gently untense them and that helps them to relax. And I did that. My I was like, it's just my shoulders. I also hold tension in my shoulders. I think a lot of people do. So it was there that I just was more conscious of trying to really relax. It's nice and and it was I woke up at five and uh checked um, to see if we'd won the premium bonds. We had, but not a big price, <laughs> just a small amount. It's like, oh, that'll pay for a chair for the kitchen. You know, not not a big amount, but it, you know, it's nice to win something. And then um, thought, I'd, I'm going to doze again, go back to sleep. 
usually get up at six. Now my alarm goes off at six, to be fair, I don't always get up. I uh, I get up a little bit um, later. Um, I'm going to add another colour to this edge, but when I do the bottom bit, I think. Now I'm just having a look. I think I'm tempted to do this roof the same, although it looks more like a different type, just so that it all matches. I think it's quite nice to, to have some coherence across the um, across the bird boxes. I'm not sure what's going on in here. Is that a door? I think it is. I'm going to do it as a door. So yeah, I um, I just I did have a doze for about half an hour, and then I um, after I checked the premium bonds, and then I uh, oh, there's another train. It's not trains today, and then I um, um, hmm, I'm trying to think of what colour to do for the bird boxes. I think I'm going to grab, as I said, a more ready brown. I'm going to use the sepia. This isn't. A shade of sepia that like I like dark sepia in the polychromos this isn't this is probably more a bit more like a sepia photo which is what you would maybe expect sepia to look like if you know what they are um, depends how old you are I I am um, I remember seeing them certainly um, color photography was around when I was sort of alert as to photography I don't know when it first came in. But anyway, I know my parents had their official wedding photos. Were when did they get married? I can't remember what year it was. I mean, obviously I wasn't there. Well, I say obviously I wasn't there. It might not be obvious, um, but um, their official photos were black and white. But one of their relatives had a um, color camera and took a few coloured pictures and some of them seem to have been like painted or something or coloured afterwards but uh, it's quite interesting so I've just done a very basic coat of colour on all of these and now I'm going to sort of do each one at a time and add in the shading so I think under the roof line there's going to be a bit of shadow there is some shadow here drawn in but I like to add a little bit more in like that and then maybe it's going to be a little bit darker on the side of the house and maybe up from the bottom. Just a little bit. I don't know. You can sort of guess. There we go. Um, the windowsill and step. Mm, I think might do it just in a darker application of colour like that. Okay. And I'm thinking, I don't know what these are. Maybe we'll just match them into the house. If it was my house, I'd want it all to match. Not that my house all matches. It'd be lovely, but it doesn't. But uh, maybe that's what I'd do. Now, this one here, we've got this roof. Remember I said we were going to do a bit. I'm just going to put a bit of this over the top. So it sort of looks a little bit lighter because it's a little bit different to this top because it's a sort of cut part. And um, it will just sort of help it to blend in with this colour, I think. Well, it won't blend. Blend isn't the right word. But I just mean it will look right, I guess. And then that one, quite dark. Like that. So, again, with this one, a little bit of this. On this bit. We've got a chimney on here, just to make it a little bit more com oops, complicated. Um, I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. Let's do that with a bit of window frame. Let's just go under here, like we did on the other house. And around here, look, I'm going to make that dark so it stands out. I'm just going to fade it towards the middle a little bit, a bit on the step, and then up from the bottom, like that, and maybe a bit here. Okay, now I'm wondering whether to put another layer of colour across the houses. What's this colour? Yeah, that might work. This is the cinnamon. And I think if we just put a little bit over, it's like a, a glaze almost. I'm not using the right words. But it will just um, take away a bit more of that um, 
white paper and um, just blend in a little bit more. It sort of slightly fades down our shading but I think that's okay. Okay, now the chimney I'm going to do in this too. Now we see it. Is that snow? Is that snow? Hmm. Don't know. It's autumn. Don't get a bit, but maybe not. I think I might just do it in the Mars black if I can find it. Where did I put it? Um, there it is. Oh, <laughs> it's getting lost. So Mars black and just a light. Um, it and I'm going to put a little bit underneath the bricks to make them look like they're just sort of standing out a bit. Okay, now the front doors this is where I want to add start adding some brighter colour. I want my front doors to look quite bright. I was thinking a red, uh, orangey red might look nice. Um, what do we have? Reds are a little bit lacking in this set, actually. Let me look at my um, swatch chart. So we've got, those are more pinks there. We've got a purple deep in, as I say, red, red ochre there is quite orangey. That might work, actually, with the chi bit of Chinese orange. Maybe let's have a go at that. So I've got to find it first. Um, uh, there it is here's the red ochre so I put um i put a bit of the red ochre on each door to start with i do want it to look quite red rather than brown so actually i think quite a hard layer of that it looks quite cool and this door and this door like that and what we can do is use the Chinese orange if I can find it there it is to just add a little bit of shadow maybe to the bottom like that and do this window frame just so it looks slightly different could do the other window frames in this but I've already done them in the I think I used a sepia, didn't I? I don't know. So there we go. So the doors stand out a little bit more, which is what I wanted. I'm going to do the leaves next, I think. Now, I was thinking of a sort of more autumnal colours, which I know it's summer. So I'm just looking at what I've got. Um, oxide of chrome, I'm thinking, is quite a brownish green. And we could lead into some browns and oranges slightly. What have we got? Um, maybe it's, we don't want it too close to the colour of the houses. That's the only thing. Um, oxide of chrome. And then we haven't used the slate grey. What colour is that? I'm just going to scribble. Mm, quite dark. Yeah. Let's use the terracotta light and then a sort of orangey colour. I could use. Hmm. Uh, what have we got? I'm just having a quick look. Uh, I think the terracotta light is quite orangey actually. It might be enough with just those two. So, what I'm going to do, start with the oxide of chrome and do this sort of the centre part of each leaf and then fade the colour down okay and then we're going to add the other color on the tips you might want to watch and see if you like it before you uh, put the other color on you could always put a lighter green on the end if you wanted it doesn't have to be whoops the color that i've picked now for me this looks like it might be moss so i'm not going to color it um, in this color we'll find something else for that in a bit It's interesting, it's the nighttime picture and the owls asleep. I thought they were nocturnal. You'd think it would be awake. But it looks very cute. So 
so uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with it being asleep and looking so cute. So uh, I've got to pop out later. Looks like it's going to rain. But I've only got to go to the post box. So it's the post box is like five minutes, if that, up the road um, on foot. Um, it takes longer at the pedestrian crossing to wait for the cars to stop on the main road at the top. I don't know if you can hear the traffic in the background, that's on the main road. It takes longer to wait to cross the road than it does to actually go walk up the road and up to the post box and back. It is up a little hill, but uh, I'm just looking at this sort of dark... This, I'm going to sort of put down quite... trying to make that quite dark in there because it looks like it's sort of a bit further back in the tree rather than being a sort of defined leaf. So what I am trying to do is to put more layers under the edges. So under here and again on here, look, I'm going to put a bit more here, make it a bit darker and then less towards here. I've got stars in this picture. I'm always not sure whether to do them in gold. I've got some stickles in here. I could use my metallic pen. I could just use a white or leave them white or I could use a yellow. I think I might um, use a yellow today just because it's different. I use, I usually, oh, it's a crow or is it a jackdaw? I wonder. But uh, not sure. Um, I think I might just use a yellow because I think it will show up quite well. We've got uh, mm, our yellows. We've got a few brightish yellows in this set. The um, I find the range of colours in this um, Castle Arts Gold a little bit odd. I don't know whether the 120 set is better, but there's loads of browns um, and quite a few greens, which is always really useful. But there's very few, so I've got an itch, very few red, which is odd. Lots of pink. Um, you can make red from pink, obviously. I find if you add purple, you can darken it enough. Oh, we've got these. Um, darken it enough to make a sort of pinky, co um, reddy colour. But uh, it is nice to have the colours there, so you don't have to always make them. You know, it's particularly if you're a beginner, trying to work out what to combine with what and what works and what doesn't. And also, if you're doing it across lots of items, like all these leaves, trying to remember quite what you're doing. So we've got the terracotta light now, and I'm going to do this at the tips. And you'll see it's a little bit browny yellowy, and it'll make them look a little bit autumnal. I'm just going to overlap it and try and mix the colours together a little bit. I think they look quite oak leaf like and I think this colour just seems to work quite well. I don't know if you get oak trees where you are. I love oak trees. The leaves are so pretty. We don't have any actually really nearby here but see a lot around. Not in our street, we have a lot of ash and um, willows because we're by the river which are very pretty but a very different type of leaf and the problem with willows is they they get very um, willowy <laughs> what I mean is they get very tall and thin and they get brittle and so um, if it's windy and dry they snap and then they fall over the road here. You get a tree right across the road. And uh, I'm always having to call highways and uh, tell them there's a tree on the road. They have to send out someone to, uh, if it's windy, to remove it. But cars would often just drive over it because it's, they're very thin. But um, I don't think it's ideal. It's, you know. But people just impatient having to get to work. They can't wait for a try and think of the name tree surgeon or whatever it might be to come out 
So uh, we just wait. So as I said right at the beginning, this is a buddy colour and um, me and June were intending on putting our video up on the same day on YouTube and I'm hoping that I can get a link to hers to put into mine so that um, you can go and have a look but if you can't I will put a link to her YouTube and Instagram so you can go and look there but uh, if the video is up already I'll put a link to the video as well so uh, you can go and have a little look and compare ours are so different um, so uh, which is really interesting mine's warm colors hers is cold colors hers is got it's beautiful really beautiful it's well worth a look so uh, I should go and see as I say her techniques very different to mine but uh, I think that makes it fun you can just see something and then decide which you like the best there we go okay so there are leaves I'm happy with those I think they look nicely autumnal oh, we haven't done the ones under the owl okay we'll get back to these so this is the oxide of chrome and we'll just go under the owl like that fade the colour towards the tips of the leaves suddenly really hungry. What time is it? 10 to 11. Mm. Terracotta light. I think I'll wait for lunch. We'll have an early lunch rather than snacking. don't need to snack. I try not to. I try and listen to my body. If I'm so hungry it's distracting me. I'll go and get something to eat. But I really try it. Is it just because I'm... Am I really... Does it matter? Being hungry isn't a problem. You know, it's okay to be hungry. Right, we haven't got a lot left, which is a shame. I've been really enjoying it. We've got these mossy bits. And I think I'm going to use the hooker's green, if I can find it. It's quite a dark green. I think it's quite good for moss. I'm just going to give it a sharpen. So here we go, hooker's, hooker's green. Normally, well, in polychromos, the hooker's green is... Um, I'm not um, shading this, I'm just doing it in a solid colour. In the polychromos, the hooker's green is a bluey green, but in the castle, it's a browny green, which I find quite fascinating. But um, I've got my swatch chart, so I know what colour it is, so that's okay. With my polys, I've had them for so long, I know what colour every, you know, what it's going to look like, so that's good. Um, is that all there is of that? Yes. Okay, now we have these um, pine trees at the bottom, so I want those to definitely be a sort of bluey green. I just move my pencils around. Let me have a little look. What have we got? Just um, looking at this swatch chart. So here are our bluey greens, but this one, this one's too pale, and these are. That thallo green could be good. Um, and I was also looking at the Terra Verde, but it's quite a different shade. So this is more of a blue-green, this is more of a grey-green, and this is more of a blue-green. It's quite an interesting difference. I think I'm going to use the Thalo Green, and then I might use the Terra Verde Deep to um, do a bit of shading. Um, let's have a look. I've got to find them now. That's the Terra Verde Deep. There's the... Where's your fallow green gone? Is it there? Yeah. Right. I, I take the pencils out. When I put them back, I don't put them back in the same order, so I can't always find them. But here's the fallow green. So I'm going to put a layer. Do I leave that as snow? No. It's autumn. It's not snowing. It could be, but it's not in my picture. I'm going to make it green. I, really, I don't know if it's intended to be snow or not, but it isn't now. A little spider. It's all fluffy. A floof, floofy spider. It's very cute. I don't know whether to just do him black. I think we'll 
try and think of something a bit more interesting. It might be grey or brown. You don't want him to hide inside the black background. Okay, so I've done a rough um, bit there. And I'm going to use the Terra Verde Deep to put in some shadows and then go back over again. So here he is, Terra Verde Deep. So he's quite blue, but I think it'll be okay. We'll put a little bit in under each of these lines. Like this. And then we can, uh, oops, I'm moving the page, sorry. And then we can just go back over with the other colour, the phthalo, wasn't it? And uh, blend that in a bit and uh, get rid of the white. So back to the phthalo, to phthalo green, sorry, I was going to say turquoise, it's not. And uh, just go back over, paying a bit more attention to any white areas that you want to eliminate because areas where you may have not coloured as hard as others I've got quite a few of those just trying to get rid of those and you could make it more sort of liney because it's pine but uh, I'm not going to do that with this one I'm going to leave it quite solid sometimes it's very difficult to Cross that fine line between making it look liney and like a pine tree, like this texture, and just making it like you scribbled all over it. And uh, I'm not confident I can pull it off, so I'm going to leave it. Right, spider. I'm going to choose some slightly browny greys for the spider. And I am going to use the slate grey and oddly the blue grey. Okay. If you look at the ends, you can see that that blue-grey is... I'm just seeing if it's raining. I can hear the wind blowing. It sounds like rain, but I can't see any. Anyway, the blue-grey is actually quite brown. I don't know why it's called brown-grey. Blue-grey, sorry. But I'm going to use it first. Um, give it a sharpen. So blue-grey first. And just go all over little spidey. I haven't decided what I'm doing for the owl, by the way. I'm just carefully ignoring him. He's having a snooze. He doesn't want to be disturbed. <laughs> so there he is. And then we're going to just sharpen my slate grey. You can see it doesn't look blue. I guess it doesn't look that brown either. Oh, I just snapped my pencil. My sharpness too full. Right, I'm going to ignore that. I'm, I'm going to go back to my slate grey we're going to do our shading with the slate so at the bottom of the spider a bit darker than the top in the main part of the body and then with the limbs legs I think they're going to be darker nearer the body and lighter towards the tips he's a bit lighter than I had planned but I think that's okay now our owl is the star of the show he's um I've got to sort out the pencil sharpener later um he's very cute it's lovely. I'd quite like to leave him white, but I think he'll look like I haven't tried to colour him. So I'm going to start with his beak and his feet. And I want a nice sort of um, golden brown, really. But I don't have that sort of... I think the cadmium yellow is going to be the closest I've got. Now, I would sharpen this more if my sharpener hadn't decided to get too full. Obviously, it's not my fault. It's the sharpener's fault. <laughs> there we go there he is uh oh he's so cute now I'm really tempted to do him the same grey as the spider but I think I'll do him a slightly different grey and I'll just show you again the chart this Venetian blue is purple the blue grey is what we use we could use the graphite light um, which I think I will use if I can find it and if it isn't too blunt it's okay. I'll get away with it. So the graphite light I'm going to use for the main bit. So I'm just going to do it all over him really. He's very pale so I'm going to have to layer up a little bit to uh, get some colour out of it. Especially as it's blunt. It's easier to get. You get a more 
um, saturated colour from a sharp pencil because it can push the colour right down into the um, into the tooth of the paper. So there's a initial coating of colour and I'm going to go for a slightly darker one, actually this is really quite dark. Um, there's the Cool Grey Deep, it's very dark so I'm going to be very careful with it so this time rather than pushing hard I'm going to be very light and I just want to mark in some shadow under the wing. Luckily this is quite sharp, a little bit here. So just along the bottom and we could just put some lines in the fur here. It look cute. Maybe a little bit on the head like that. As it looks like you can see a few strands here and there. But not on the face. It leaves the face slightly lighter and paler. Now I'm going to actually use this for the um, for here. You could use a silver pen because it would be shiny. Now our stars, um, I could use the same cadmium yellow that I used for their feet, but I think we won't because I wanted to use look slightly different. So I'm going to try the golden yellow. Now, all, despite its name, it's a fairly muted yellow. So I'm going to press, well, I'm going to layer it up. I'm not going to press too hard. I haven't actually put a piece of paper under this page, so I need to be a bit careful. I don't want to transfer the ink across. I'm doing the little circles the same colour. You don't have to do that. See, they could be snow. If you did your um, these with snow on, these could be bits of snow. But uh, that's not the route that I've taken. We can all do it our own way. Now, stars do look pretty if they are metallic or sparkly. So you can add some shine. I think I'm going to add some shine at the end to my stars. I'll show you how. When I'm done, you'll have to wait. You probably know anyway. But uh, I just finished these little dots. Yeah. So I'm going to use my sparkling glitter pen. It's a Sakura jelly roll. It's hashtag 700 if you want to buy it. Um, I sent it as a gift which was good. A very kind. So you just go over the top of what you've coloured and it adds a glaze of glitter which is really fun. So you can still see through and see the colour underneath but um, you can also um, get that sparkle. I know Sakura do a set of glitter pens with different colour gel as well, so that might be more to your taste. They are on my wish list, but um, this one is lovely. And I'm actually lucky enough to have a few of these. So uh, when this one runs out, which I'm sure it will soon because I use it loads, um, I'll be able to get a few more, I'll be able to use the others. Okay, I'm just going to check and see if that's all of them. I think it is. I can lift it up for you and catch the light on the sparkle. I don't know how well it's showing up. It's a little tricky to show you. But there, I'm just checking. I'll make sure I've actually finished the picture, but I'm pretty sure that I have. Yeah, I think that's done. You might want to add an extra layer on top of the leaves. With, there's a few whiter areas. You could, I would maybe use a leaf green deep or something just to go over it all, maybe. I don't know. But um, I'm going to leave it there. So uh, that is our cute little owl spider, owl house scene. So as I say, look in the description please now and you can go and find um, my links to June's pages and you can go and check out the um, other version which I hope will be fun for you. So thank you for watching, please enjoy your day, have a really lovely rest of your day um, and happy colouring!